Hey, Jim Walnitsky from the Photo Tribe here. My buddy Blake Rudis, who's taught me a thing or two about processing photographs, has released his new palette effects. It's a tool designed specifically for finishing photographs, and it'll make your life so much easier. I'm going to show you how I used it to take this photograph and make this. This photo was taken at the Palmer House in Chicago, and if you've never been there, you should go because it is an amazing place on the inside. It's really a window back in time almost. You walk into the place and uh, you would never know from the street that this is what's inside. But I thought this would be a really cool photo to demonstrate palette effects because of the dramatic possibilities in this photo. It just reminds me of a old Egyptian temple or something. So the first thing that we have going on here is we've got a pretty severe color cast that we have to correct. And we're going to do that by making a duplicate of this layer. I'm just going to drag this down to the new layer icon. You can also hit Control or Command J to make a duplicate. And we're going to go up into the filter menu and I'm going to select Blur and Average. And Photoshop gives me the average color in the photograph. And essentially this is our color cast, which as you can see is pretty severe. The way to correct the color cast is not to subtract the dominant color, it's to add the opposite color. Think of color as a scale that you have to kind of balance and you have to make sure that you've got the correct mix of all the colors or you're going to just make the color cast worse. So how do we figure out what the opposite color of this is? We can do that simply by inverting this layer. So I'm going to hit Control or Command I on a Mac and I'm going to get this color. So this is the opposite color. And if I want to add this color to the photo, all I have to do is come up to the Blend Layer drop-down menu here and select Color. Obviously, that's way too much. So what I'm going to do is just grab my Opacity slider and drag it to the left and turn it all the way off and just kind of sneak it in until it starts to look right to me. Now, is this an exact way to do color correction? No. But it's going to get you in the ballpark. And I've been in this room enough times to know what it looks like. And that's pretty darn close. So now I'm going to open up Palette Effects. This is just the coolest tool. It's got all kinds of stuff in here that makes my workflow go so much quicker. One of the greatest things I love about this is this grading palette here. This makes color grading a breeze and it's laid out in such a way that's so logical it makes so much sense you know you go from darker to lighter and you've got a great variety of different colors here that you can use to grade your shadows or to grade your highlights or to grade the whole photo for that matter and there's even an analyze section up in here and the education that Blake provides with palette effects will explain all of this in great detail but I want to look at my favorite part of palette effects right now and that is this button right here Welninsky Drama. So when Blake told me that he was naming a button after me, I wasn't really sure what to say. Um, I was honored, to say the least. And I have to say that Blake has done an amazing job of taking my process and kind of boiling it down to four or five steps and really kind of get to the essence of what I'm after when I'm creating black and white work. And so when you click on that button, it returns these five layers. I'm going to turn these two off right now just so we can have a look and see what's going on here. So this bottom layer here is a color modifier which we'll work with in just a second. This is actually where the black and white conversion takes place. It's a black and white gradient which really is the best way to do a really neutral black and white conversion because the gradient map is remapping all of your tones to either black or white or whatever shade in between. So this layer here is the color modifier. So now what I can do is go in here. I'm just going to double click on this to bring up the properties of this hue saturation layer. And now I can go in and start to fool around with the colors that are in the image. So we have an image that if I turn this off, we can see is essentially lots of reds and some yellows. And so the first thing I'm going to play with is the reds. And by moving this saturation control, I can actually you know, determine what these reds look like. Now I want my reds to be darker because they're kind of the contrasty areas here. 
and I can actually mess with the hue of this and push them around and I want them to be darker still. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to grab my yellows next and you know do the same kind of thing. I want to brighten those up. Not too much. I don't want to go too far but I want to brighten them up enough so that I've got some nice contrast in here and that looks pretty good. Do I want to push this hue around? Mm, well, maybe a little. Just a touch. And then we can play with this saturation control. So if I turn these off, you can see that I've got some, you know, blues and maybe greens in here. So let's play with those and see what we get. I'm going to go to the cyans. And if I start to move this slider around, you can see that up in this ceiling area here, we start to get some things happening. So I'm going to just do that. And do I want to push this a little bit more towards, if I push this too far towards blue, it's probably going to get too dark. And so I'll probably leave that right where it's at. And I'm going to go to the blues and I bet I'm going to get the same thing because blue and cyan are related. And I don't want to go too far, but you can see how I start to bring out some of the detail that's up in here. And I like that. So let's try moving this around. And again, you know, we don't want to really move that around too much. So I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking already. If I turn this off, you can see where we came from, and here's where we're at. Now, there are some things that I want to do to um, bring out some details and kind of play some things down. So I turned these two layers off um, before, and now I've turned them back on. And what these are are basically dodging and burning layers. So the darken is a burn layer, the lighten is a dodge layer. And so if I want to reveal this darkening adjustment, if I just double click here, I can see that there's a darkening adjustment on here. The curve has been pulled down. All I need to do is go to the uh, mask here and just paint with a white brush. And I have some opacity brushes set up here. So I've got uh, a brush that's pressure sensitive now to my Wacom pen. And it's a 20% brush. And I can start to darken some things. So the first thing I want to do is kind of darken this pillar a little bit. Just the shadow that's kind of falling across here. So I'm just painting with white on here just to to darken this up a bit. And we're not going to do a whole lot of darkening here because I've got really good contrast and stuff in my ceiling already. That's really kind of all I'm looking for in that area. So if I turn this on and off, you can see that we've just done a little bit of darkening there and that looks really good. Uh, maybe one thing we can do is just kind of zoom in here and right along the edge of this pillar, I'm going to make my brush a little smaller here. And I'm just going to come up here. Now I've got my mouse in my hand. And I just want to define this little corner a bit. And I'm just going to click back and forth up and down here a few times just to kind of define that. I'm going to do the same thing over here and just kind of carve this out. And we might as well do the same thing here. And let's make sure we get the whole thing. There we go. And here as well. Okay. Now I want to go over to the the statue itself and I want to start to carve out some of these details so I'm just going to make my brush a bit smaller and I'm going to start to paint in on these areas where there's already some shadow detail and I just want to you know just just carve this out so you know this kind of stuff might seem like yeah it's kind of detail work and it can be boring but you know what this is this is the kind of thing that's going to make a big difference um, it's going to separate your work from everybody else's because it's going to look three-dimensional. And um, so I'm just kind of hunting around here to see if there's anything else that I really want to hit. And everything else looks pretty good. I'm going to go under her eye here a little bit. And we'll just hit these again just to darken this stuff up. And we're just about done here. And so let's turn this on and off so you can see. All right, so just a little bit of dodging and burning. And if I zoom out to 100% here, um, not open, there we go, and turn this on and off, you can see what we've done. And that looks pretty nice. So I wanna go up now and do some dodging because this kind of stuff here is a little too dark for me now. I wanna open this stuff up. So let's zoom in here and start to work in here. So I've got my mask selected and I'm still painting with the same white brush. So let's just make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to come in here now. Actually, I'm going to increase the opacity of my brush a bit. 
and I'm just going to start to paint in along this area here. Just I want to brighten this stuff up. And you'll see that my brush strokes aren't exact. They don't have to be because light doesn't fall in a perfectly geometric way. It's an organic thing. And if I want to see what I'm doing, right? So that's not quite strong enough for me. But because I have a curve here, I can go in here and modify this. So I'm going to bring this up. And I'm going to take this off and just kind of move this down here. And now pull that up. And now I'm getting kind of what I want. And why do we put this here? Just to maintain a little bit of that contrast so it doesn't start to look too washed out. So back to my mask. And now I'm getting something that I've expected here. I'm not going to go too far here. But all right, so let's just make this a little bit smaller and kind of get in on these, these little ribbons here. And this, um, this statue here fascinates me every time I go to the Palmer House. I, I photograph this thing every time I go. And I come away with a different photograph all the time, but I don't know, it just, it stands next to the stairway of this uh, that leads up to kind of the main ballroom in the Palmer House. And um, I don't know, it, it makes you feel kind of like, you know, you're the emperor of the world or something. So I'm just carving out, you know, some of these other lighter details here just to, just to add, again, add some, um, some dimension and some, some shape to this so that it doesn't look so flat. And you can go crazy on this, doing this kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, if I was working this for real, um, I was going to put this in a gallery or something, then I would certainly uh, be a lot more exact in what I was doing. But and you'll get the idea here of what we're doing. So, you know, I want to see all this stuff because it's cool and unique and beautiful. So I want to see these edges here a little more. And I want to lighten this up because I want to see that. And you'll notice that as I'm dodging and burning, I'm not taking this too far. I'm not destroying the shape that I already have. I'm working with what the image has given me. So let's make this smaller and just go in here. And you know, this is how easy you can create a really compelling black and white photograph. So let's just zoom out and see what we've got. And I'm gonna turn this layer on and off. Well, that makes a big difference, doesn't it? All right, so here comes the fun part. I like everything dark, um, and I like to paint with light. So we have this, if I turn this on, we have this black layer, um, which is lights on. I kind of think of it as lights out, but that's okay. And the opacity on this is 75%. That's not quite enough for me in this case. I think I'm going to bring this up. I don't know, let's take a guess here and say 83. That's a lot better. And so all I'm going to do now is just put light where I want it. And I'm just going to make my brush really big here. There we go. I'm going to take the biggest brush I can get. And I'm going to increase the opacity of my brush to about 70%. So it's about the face and the lights and the upper part here. And so all I need to do is just make sure that um, I'm on my mask. And all I have to do is just take my black brush here. So I need to flip this over and just click and just kind of turn the lights on, right? I'm just going to click a couple of times and, and let the lights come on here. And so now I'm going to make my brush a bit smaller and I'll reduce the opacity and just kind of click in the middle here a couple of times. And I'm going to go down to like 50. And so we're just painting in some of the areas and turning lights on where they should be turned on. So there, and we absolutely want to see this, right? So I'm going to make this a little smaller so that I'm only in my um, podium here. Just change tool there by mistake. There we go. Just like that. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to put a little bit of light in here because it would look funny if I didn't. And a little bit of light up that pillar. I don't like that last one. So I'm going to undo that and make this smaller. And I'm going to reduce the opacity down to 30. And I just want that light to kind of creep up in there. And we've got to have some in here as well. 
um, so that you want to make sure that when you start to bring light back, it looks, you know, natural. You don't want to have it so that it looks weird and that you've got uh, a, a photo that's really dark because that's um, not going to help you. So I've reduced it to 20. I'm going to zoom out and I just want to add a little bit of light here. I'm going to let the edge of the brush talk for me and the same thing up there and the same thing up there. And then we'll just click in here a couple more times and make sure that we've got what we want lit up, lit up. And so there's my black and white conversion. And that looks pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's, I'm very happy with that. That looks really nice. You know, I'm always wondering, should I put more in there? But that looks pretty solid. Okay. And so this is where I started to get kind of carried away. What I'm going to do here before I do anything else is I'm going to make a copy of my background layer. And I'm going to bring it to the top of my layer stack. And you got to make sure that you go to the top. Otherwise, if you do this, if you get those two lines around the group, it's going to drop into the group. And that's not what we want. We want this up on top. So I'm going to put it on top. And I'm going to change the blend mode of this to color. So all I'm doing is taking the color from this layer and applying it to this. Now that looks really nasty. Don't freak out because we're going to have fun with this. I'm going to open up palette effects. And in the effects section, at the top, there's these film emulations up here. And these things are a ton of fun. So I'm going to click the Kodachrome one. And look what this returns to me. Let's take a look at what's in here. So I've got... Um, some color manipulation and a curve and a couple of gradients and another curve. And, you know, I could pick any of these curves that I want or any gradients that I want. And I played around with this for a while and I just decided, you know what, I'm going to leave them all on and see what happens. Because sometimes you just got to ex experiment and make sure you close this group. And I'm going to go up and add another one, which is the Code of Glow. And so there's some interesting things happening here. We're going to get a blur and we're also going to get a shadows and highlights layer that's going to allow us to control what it is that we're bringing back where we're putting this blur so shadows and highlights i'm going to kind of play with my tone here a little bit and see how much of this tone i want do i want this really wide open or do i want it you know i kind of want it there and how much of it do i want that looks good. And I don't think I'm going to have to mess with my highlights at all. Those are pretty solid. So this mid-tone section here, I can actually remap the mid-tone of my image. And I am going to remap it a little bit. I want to close it down. OK. And I'm going to click OK. And so now I've got these two interesting um, film emulations on top of what is essentially a pretty garish image, but this returns something really cool. So let's take this one step further. If you have the zone system, then you have this dude right here, the Radius 2.0, which is a wonderful glow. I'm just going to apply that and we'll play with that a little bit. And this is going to just put the finishing touch on this image. So you get this dialog box that tells you that the lower the radius, the more concentrated the glow is. I'm just going to hit continue and I'm going to get my box here and I'm just going to turn this up because I want this thing to really kind of glow. And I shot this with a, a Nikon D850, so it's a big image, so I can push my radius pretty high. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to get a highlights and shadows adjustment layer where I can do the same thing that I did before. I can really regulate where the effect falls here. So let's just play with this a little bit. And I don't want that too closed in. And for my highlights, you know, I got to watch. I don't want that those bulbs to get too blown out, but I don't want them to be flat either. So I'm going to push that just a bit and probably... And pull that back just a little bit. And do I want to play with my mid-tone at all? Maybe a little bit. And if I do that, I can probably go back into my 
shadows and pull that back just a touch. And I'm going to hit OK. So we took this really garish photo with some really great black and white tones in it and turned it into, I think I just reordered that, and turned it into something that's really cool. Now I can go into my radiance effect here and look at the saturation of my radiance and pull that back just a bit so that it's not too oversaturated. But I think I want to do one more thing, and that's I'm going to close this group, and I'm going to go back to palette effects, and I want to add just a little bit of a color grade to this. And really what I want is I just want to add a color grade to the shadows. I'm happy with the way the highlights look, and it's really super stinking easy for me to do that. I want to make sure that these shadows have kind of a red um, flavor to them because the light is golden and the photo itself is golden and these shadows are looking a little too cool for me. So I'm going to go into the red section here and I can select any of these um, red color grades that I want and it doesn't really matter because I kind of know what blend mode I want here and I really want to change my blend mode to soft light and I'm going to go into my blend if and I want to protect the highlights of the underlying layer, right? So I'm just going to split this off by holding down the Alt or the Option key. So they get a nice gradient in here. And now this is only on my shadows. And if I want to change the color, all I have to do is double click on this. And this dialog box is going to come up and I can change the color. And if you watch down here and you see what's happening, right? So I can go, you know, that's too much, obviously. And I don't want it too saturated. I want it kind of bright, though. And because I'm using a contrast blend mode, soft light, it's making the dark parts darker and the light parts lighter because that's what those contrast blend modes do. So if I turn this on and off, you can see what's happening to my shadows. And so I've decided that I don't really want it in the middle section. I only want it on the outer section. So I'm just going to take my mask here. Let's close this down. And I'm going to grab my brush tool. And I'm going to make sure that I'm painting with black. And we're going to make this big, just like this. And I'm going to paint with, say, 50% opacity. And just kind of do a sweep here with black. And maybe one more. And if I decide that's a bit too much, I can just turn the opacity of that down a bit. And that looks pretty darn solid. So I am really excited about this panel. I've been excited about it for a long time. I got to watch Blake develop it. He would send me something, then he'd call me up, then he'd go, open your email, I just sent you something. You got to check this out. And he'd always blow my mind. If you want more information about this panel, click on the link below. I can't recommend it highly enough. Blake's a genius, and he continues to astound me. This is Jim Walnitsky from the Photo Tribe. I will see you next time. Until then, be creative and have fun.